Okay, that's episode 3. What we're going to do this episode is hopefully detect the size of the board. Um, do a couple of like operations on the image, such as um, we might grayscale, I'm not too sure. I don't think we will grayscale actually. We'll, uh, we'll edge detect using canny edge detection. Um, might blur, probably not though. Uh, what else will we do? So edge detection and that's probably it. Edge detection with hue lines. Uh, hue lines will detect lines. So we're going to look if we can detect the uh, the grid, the grid lines. Uh, I've seen suggestions that we should detect the lines by like filtering out all of the colors except the line. But as you'll see when you go through, um, maybe not here actually. Where is it? Where it changes color? Okay. There we go. So we've got, we've got different colour lines now rather than being like the yellowy lines, like blue. So yeah, I'm not too sure how that would work there. And I'd rather it be as general as possible, um, not just relying on some finicky colour. So yeah, we're going to use hue lines instead. Um, another thing I thought of is these parameters here. I would like these to be specified. Whoops, we don't want a negative there. Um, I would like these to be specified up in main and then passed in a capture board. So we're going to quickly do that now. So we're going to have, um, we'll pass it as a tuple probably. So we'll have dimensions of board. And then we'll pass that, these numbers, and then this here will get passed into capture board, capture board will take that and it will have it right there. So if we save this and run we should get exactly the same thing we do but it just means now that if we ever move our board all we've got to do is change the dimensions of the board up here and yeah it means we don't have to do it elsewhere. It also means that later on when we go, when it comes to like locating specific pixels and stuff we could just use the dimensions of the board rather than having to hard code in numbers it just makes the code a lot more uh, expandable in the future like a lot easier to add to uh, a lot easier to read because you, there's not like random numbers that you think but where's these numbers came from we can see right well this here is using dimensions of the board dimensions of the boards up here this is these numbers we could probably guess that from dimensions of the board that's what this is like with where the the board actually is on your screen so yeah should help. Uh, obviously, it doesn't make a change to the code, but it should help long term. So, next function. So for now, we'll, we'll just get rid of this. Um, we'll give ourselves some space here as well, make that obvious. And now we've got the original board. So we're going to take this. We're going to process it. So we'll have um, what we're we going to return from this function. So we're probably going to return the size of the board, right? If that's what aim of it is. So let's have size of board equals um, call it um, grid. No, sorry. Well, it's, it's going to detect vertical lines. We'll call it a vertical line detector. This is what I did in my other, uh, other code, so let's just keep it the same. Vertical line detector. And this is going to take an image. Whoops. Sorry, it's not going to take an image. It's going to take the original board. Right, so define vertical whoops, vertical line detector now this is going to take an image and now this image is the one we're going to operate on so we're going to how are we going to grayscale it? Uh, yeah, why not? so Gray image equals cv2 dot convert color. Uh, 
and then we're going to convert the color of image I'm going to convert it using cv2 dot color and then this is going to be um, RGB to gray oops something like that so now let's keep testing all the way through and it'll uh, hopefully be clear what we've done so we can display gray image and there we go so now we've got a gray image of the board um, obviously what we're looking for is that the lines are still there we don't actually care about the circles but they are still there so yeah hopefully this is going to make it easier for our line detector and our edge detector to um, to pick out the lines but we'll see so next step we're going to detect the edges so edge image is equal to cv2 dot canny so canny edge detection um, it's actually been around since like the 80s or something I think but um, yeah there's lots of videos on YouTube you can find uh, I know computer file did some videos on it that's where I first saw it um, so yeah if you're interested in that uh, I think they did one on like Sobel edge detector as well um, and I might have done hue lines I'm not sure but yeah basically if you want to learn more about it, go look there. Yeah, I'm not really the guy to ask about that. So, grey image, it's going to take. And then we've got some threshold values. Um, I'm just going to copy these over from my, from my other code because basically I messed around with these for a while to try and um, get them to work with the image that we have. And I found these numbers to be fine. Um, what they are is. 100 and 200 is basically uh, actually you, you'd be better off if you want to know what these numbers are and how they work go look up the computer file video that I've just talked about um, it explains it all in there and probably does a better job of anything I could do so yeah do that now let's look at this image so edge image save that run that and there we go, we can see we've got edges. So, one thing you might notice is we've actually got double edges on all these lines. That's because obviously the lines just, they aren't one pixel thick. They're like three or something in this. So, it's picking up the edge on one side and then picking up the edge on the other. Um, and although it's obvious to us what's happening, I would imagine they're going to come back as double lines. Like I've I've seen it in my other code where they have actually came back as double lines, which wouldn't be an issue normally because you can just divide it by two. But I've also seen it where occasionally on certain boards they only come back as single lines. So I've got an idea for filtering out these extra lines that I think I'm going to go with, but um, not right now. For now, we're just going to detect lines. So. Next step, we're going to have lines equals cv2 dot hue lines or hue or how or whatever. No idea how you say it, but there you go. Hue lines p, so it's a probabil probabilistic, um, if that's how you say it, hue lines one. So you've got standard hue lines and you've got the probabilistic, so it'll work on like, is that this like probably a line or not? Um, I'm not sure what the relevance is of like that in this specific case but again I've messed around with the numbers and I've found one that works so copy these numbers um, even this blank numpy array this just like shoves over the other stuff so row theta um, sorry row and threshold one row in particular I can't remember what it is um, but theta is the orientation of the line so we're making theta equal to pi which if you know anything about radians means that it's a vertical line so that's what we're looking for, we're looking for the verticals threshold 1 I think is the um, the minimum distance no sorry I can't actually remember what threshold 1 is basically we've got a minimum line length here, this was the important one I remember because this meant that we'd only find these really long lines and um, we wouldn't find like lines in the circles and weird stuff like that 
and then max line gap that's just like that stops um like alias and sort of thing if, if there's a line that's like slightly broken but it's obviously a line so like if you have a huge line then like a two pixel break and then a huge line again you'd probably just yourself with the eye test say that's all just one line uh, this just accounts for that so we're allowed a five pixel gap in the line obviously we're not going to need that because these are pretty clean lines but I don't know I found these numbers to work so feel free to copy them now this doesn't produce a new image this actually produces um, if I remember rightly it's like an array of vectors uh, so an array of like coordinates of where the lines are so what we'll do we'll print lines and we'll see that so print lines run so you can see here where it's printed out it is an array we've got the x coordinate of where the line starts the y coordinate of where the line starts and with the x coordinate of where it ends and the y coordinate of where it ends so 90 4 3 8 90 and 7 if we bring over this window right here whoops so this is our x y coordinates so if we go to 90 on the x which is about here oh sorry um because our image was captured like from here it, this is 90 like more than that so it's probably looking at this line um then we want to be seven down so obviously it starts about here so seven down is probably about here so it's probably looking at this line right here so it starts here and then it ends at 9438 which is all the way down here look oops it's not actually 438 is down here somewhere so you can see because it's it's found a 400 length line it's found a line that goes from here down to here and it's probably found a line that goes from here up to like here and it, these two lines will obviously cross um, so yeah that's interesting it's not found the entire length it's only found the 400 length hmm I wonder if that's going to cause a problem okay so I'll have a think of that and we'll probably go through that in the next video this video is getting quite long so yeah so far we've got lines got edges um, got a little bit more to do in this function but yeah we'll go through this next video it's getting quite long so I will see you on the next one.